After my 10 year healing journey, I got a lot of opportunities to share my testimony at all the small groups at my church. And within a two month period at the end of 2015, I probably shared like 20 to 25 times the exact same story. Um, and I started to get really sick of myself say, telling the same story. And that planted this, uh, a thought in my head that one day, perhaps, Roger, you should write a book and just record it so that you don't have to go around and, and keep repeating yourself for the same story. A few months later, in the beginning of 16, I, uh, I had a business trip to Shanghai and I called up a friend of mine who's a, who's a very senior banker who, who lives there. So I asked him, hey, what are you doing for dinner tonight? And then he said, well, I've got a Bible study. Would you like to come? And I said, sure. So I got off the plane and I got in the car and I, and I sensed that the Holy Spirit was asking me to share my testimony to his Bible study. Now, I didn't want to be rude and, and barge in on his study plans. So I called and I asked, hey, what have you got planned for the Bible study tonight? He said, well, it's been a really busy week for me, so I haven't planned anything. So I said, well, would you mind if I shared my 45 minute stewardship journey? He said, oh, that would be wonderful. That saves me the headache of trying to um, cobble up something. So I get to Pudong, I get to this five star hotel and I get to the Chinese restaurant. And I just assume that given that this is China and we're doing a Bible study, it must be in a private room. So I start walking in the direction of the private room. And then the maitre d' stops me. He said, who are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for so-and-so's reservation. He said, no, he's on the other side. I look over the other side. And I'm like, well, what is that? He was pointing at a big table right in the middle of this public dining area. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. As I walked towards that table, I started to become more and more nervous. I was thinking, why is a Forbes top 75 billionaire sitting next to my friend? So Holy Spirit, you're asking me to tell this person that the money doesn't really belong to them, that the money, that the, even their ability to earn money doesn't really belong to them. It all came from the Lord. So I was extremely nervous at the prospect of having to deliver my message. So I was very glad that they were serving some very nice champagne. So I popped two glasses of Dom Perignon and then I prayed. I said, Lord, will you please give me the courage to not water down my message? And if anything, if you're so willing, please give me an even more powerful download that everyone will be edified. And I've discovered since that when you throw out these emergency prayers to God, He will answer immediately. After I delivered my bog standard 45 minute testimony, I received this fresh download that I had never thought of before. And everywhere, anywhere I go in the world now to speak, even if I only get five minutes, I will skip everything that I've said so far and I will just focus on this download, which I've given it a name and it's called the ultimate truth about money. If I'm honest with you, if I hear the words, God bless me, I'm really thinking about two things. One is a really long and healthy life. And then the second thing is having a lot of money. So let's look at each factors separately. Ever since Genesis chapter six, verse three, God has put a cap on our lifespan. And that is 120 years. Despite thousands and thousands of years of advances in health sciences, that, st that cap still pretty much holds true. So let's just take that as a given. We only get to live maximum 120 years. At the time of writing my first book, Lost and Found Money Versus Riches, Bill Gates was the richest person in the world with a net worth of 90 billion US dollars. Let's just say that God loves you even more. He gives you 120 billion US dollars. Now, simple math of 120 billion US dollars divided by 120 years, that's a billion US dollars a year. Now, if we would spend three seconds to um, imagine what kind of lifestyle that would be like, we would probably come up with adjectives such as comfortable, luxurious, and stress-free. 
Now, innately as human beings, whether you are a believer or not, we know that we cannot bring money with us beyond the grave. But let's just say for a moment that God loves you so much, He allows you to bring that 120 billion US dollars with you beyond the grave, and you successfully land in heaven. Friends, this is the precise moment your problem begins. Now, why do I say that? How long is eternity? I think as an approximation that doesn't even do it justice, for 120 years, we should add another 120 zeros after that. Less than a minute ago, when we did the simple math of 120 billion divided by 120, we came up with adjectives of luxurious, comfortable, and stress-free. What, what answer would you get now with the 120 billion US dollars with you for all eternity? 120 billion now is divided by 120 followed by 100 zeros. The answer is 0 0.001. You cannot even get a grain of rice with that. So the ultimate truth about money is, no matter how much money you have, even if you could bring it with you beyond the grave and you land in heaven, it is still not going to cut it. We need to be rich towards God. We need to accrue those true riches that will last for all of eternity.